Well, thank you for joining us. It is Pentecost Sunday. You notice the difference in color? I'm sure it's kind of glaring compared to what we've had. This beautiful red color, which is a reminder of the flame of the Holy Spirit, the gift of fire that cleanses us, that transforms us, that purifies us, that makes us new. And so we give thanks on this day of Pentecost. May God's Holy Spirit be with you. We are beginning today, this very day on Pentecost Sunday, a little bit of a difference, adding a little difference to our in-person worship services. We are adding a song. We're feeling a little more comfortable that we can add a, an actual song as a part of our service. We are also expanding our liturgy. Uh, we still do, if you do come to our worship services on a Sunday or on Tuesday for a Bible study, we still ask you to wear a mask at this point. If you're vaccinated, we get that, but you have to understand the purpose of a mask has always been not to protect you, but to protect others from you. Now, it's not that we think that you're, um, you're an evil or awful person. It's just that even a person who is vaccinated can still carry COVID-19 and pass it on to somebody who is not. Even if they don't get ill, they pass it on to somebody who might. And so we are out of respect and out of concern for those who come to our sanctuary, out of respect and love of them, protecting them. We continue to wear masks, we continue to space ourselves from one another for the time being. But that time is coming when the masks will come off, when we're more comfortable with that, we will gather together in fullness as we have in the past. So we ask you please be aware of those things if you do choose to come down for a Sunday service. It will be a 40-minute service. We were limiting ourselves to 30. And again, we are adding some liturgy and we're adding a, a song during the actual service itself. Okay, that's in the way of announcements. We're here to celebrate today. It is Pentecost Sunday. It's a great Sunday. We have a great worship service planned for you. And so we invite you to prepare your hearts with a time of confession and forgiveness. Our Lord, our God, has richly blessed us, though we were yet sinners. Out of gratitude for God's blessing, we come to repentance as a sign of our appreciation of God's grace. Let us also repent because of our desire to please the one who loved us so much that he would rather die for us than live without us. Hear the words of St. Paul, who reminds us that it is by grace that we are saved through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. All who call upon the name of Jesus Christ shall be saved. Amen. Let us sing together our opening day. Come, thou fount of every blessing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In the last days it will be, God declares, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to this world. Send us the Spirit, transform us by your truth. Give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have some truly exciting lessons for you today. I want you to hear from the book of Acts, the first, second chapter, pardon me, the wonderful story of the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the early apostles and Christians, those believers who had fallen in the way of Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ walked with them an additional 40 days after his resurrection and then ascended to heaven, but promised to give to them power from above. And so hear how this happened. The day of Pentecost had come, and they were all together in one place. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were all sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared amongst them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
So there were devout Jews from every nation under the heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language, their own native language. Amazed and astonished, they said, Are not these all who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each one of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, uh, and the visitors to Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, and we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, and they said to one another, What does this mean? Others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. <laughs> but Peter stood up and delivered uh, amongst the eleven, and he raised his voice and he addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only in nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, sigh, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. I will show portents in heaven above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire, smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the glorious, great glorious day of the Lord. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the lesson. Our psalm for today is found in the 104th Psalm. The congregation once again is well, we respond at home with every other frame. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creation, creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things, innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die, and they return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. lesson for this day of Pentecost is found in the book of John, the 15th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. And now Jesus called one of the, or the, I'm sorry, pardon me, I am actually in the wrong gospel lesson. So you please excuse me. That lesson did not look correct. We're here to discuss the Holy Spirit today. And that was a parable from the Gospel of Luke. Why, well, I often have to change my glasses and make sure we can see straight and see what the Spirit would guide us today. So here we go from the book of John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said these words, But when a counselor comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me, and you also are my witnesses, because you have been with me from the very beginning. I have said these things to you, that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told you these things. 
I didn't tell you these things from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to be with him who sent me. And none of you are going to ask me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I were not to go away, the counselor would not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will, con uh, he will convince you and convince the world of sin. And will convince the world of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they did not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I have set many, yet many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them. So when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all the things of truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare to you. All that my Father has is mine, therefore I told you. I will take what He will take what is mine, and He will declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Now, Holy Father, bless us with your word this day. May the words of my mouth and meditation of every heart be acceptable, O Lord, our strength and redeemer in your sight, now and forever. Amen. Once again, for those who are just fanatical about my sermon handouts, I'm sorry to say two weeks in a row I will not be preaching from a sermon handout today. You will not have one that you can download or follow the sermon because I really have a testimony I'm going to give to you from my heart about the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm afraid in our Lutheran church we oftentimes don't even understand who this Holy Spirit, who He is, what the Spirit does. You know there is a book out by one of our Lutheran, one of my Professors at the seminary was entitled the Holy Spirit the shy member of the Holy Trinity the Holy Spirit never speaks For himself, but always on behalf of God the Father Comes and represents Jesus the Christ in our hearts And here's the thing what we don't understand about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is that gift of God that we have sitting right with us And we often don't take advantage of it It reminds me of a story about a person who came to this country probably in the 1700s and a poor person maybe it was in the 1800s don't recall but this person had paid for the journey over to the country and of course it took a week or more at that time on a ship and it was a scary proposition he had just enough money for his ticket to come to this new world and make a new way for himself the problem was he didn't have enough money for food. And so on the ship, of course in his lower compartment, he heard all the laughter of all the people on the ship who obviously had sufficient money for food and they were enjoying themselves. And he would look in on them as they ate. And at some point, because the wind was against their ship going from England here to this country, the ship took longer to get to this country. He ran out of food. He was getting hungry. He didn't know how he was going to survive. He almost got sick, nearly died. They finally made it to shore. He was nursed back to health. And the person on the shore said, what happened that you got so sick? Did you not tolerate the journey? He said, the journey was fine. He said, it was the food that was a problem. I ran out of food because the journey took longer than I expected. And the man just kind of shook his head. It was a nurse. He just kind of shook his head and he said, Young man, don't you realize that when you paid for your journey over to this country, the food was included? See, I think that's the way of us Christians. We don't recognize that we already have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's right there. We just have to feast upon the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because here's what the Spirit is going to do for you. The Spirit is going to give you courage. When you are afraid, and oh, trust me, Christians are afraid all the time. But when we are afraid, we are given the Spirit to give us courage to face the things that we are afraid of. What else does the Spirit do for us? Oh, the Spirit gives us the words to say so that we might make our confession about the good things that God has done in our lives. So this is, again, what the early church found out 
They just witnessed naturally of the faith that God had placed in their hearts. It came so easily to them. We wonder why it doesn't come easily to us. Because we don't trust the Holy Spirit to give us the words to say. The Holy Spirit inspires us, gives us vision, and gives us direction. You know, we often talk about the muse on our shoulder. You know, I write music on occasion. When I write music, sometimes music just comes like that. There was a day, I remember, it was like 20 years ago. I was just, all of a sudden, the song came to my head. And I'll tell you what, within like four hours, I had written three songs. And, and the songs just came out right there, the, the tunes with the, the music in there. To this day, some of my favorite songs that I've written, and people listen to my music, some of their favorite music too. Where did it come from? That muse on the shoulder. Who is that muse on my shoulder? The Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit inspires us. Artists who draw and color like my daughter does, or maybe other folks, are inspired by the Holy Spirit to do some incredible works. People are inspired to do good works. They see somebody in need and who's hurting, and they're inspired to stop and help. That's the Holy Spirit beckoning you. See, the Holy Spirit is such a, an important part of a Christian's life. And we've not been feasting on the Spirit. And so now is your time. You have the Holy Spirit. How do I know you've got the Holy Spirit? Because you believe in Jesus Christ. The Spirit has been given to you. It is a free gift of God. It's now we open ourselves up to the Spirit, that we might be inspired. That we might have the witness and the testimony to say, that we might have the courage to face the days that lie ahead. So I'm praying for this gift to fall upon you this day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I think there are many of us Christians who just don't even realize that we have it. You have given us the Spirit for courage. We might have a testimony to give to those around us that we might be inspired to do good works, whether it be good works of kindness and generosity, good works in our art and our music. We're inspired to do things a better way that blesses people. Your Spirit is always present with us. And we give you thanks for the falling of the Holy Spirit on our lives today. And pray that every person within the hearing of this today might just feel that presence maybe in a powerful way they've not felt it before. It's not about the feeling of a God, but sometimes it's good just to know, to have you banging on our door, your, our door the doors of our heart, and saying, I'm here, and I'm walking with you. So inspire people. Let them know that you are with them today. And guide and direct their path, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a portent the glory divine. There of salvation, purchase of God. For love is given, washed in his blood. And this is my soul.
fix a mission. opportunity to do something wonderful and unique, something we don't do every single Sunday. We are going to affirm the claim of God on our lives and the gift of the Holy Spirit, what we call the affirmation of, of baptism this day. And so I ask you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, to reject sin, to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, respond by saying, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the resurrection and the life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, you have made public profession this day of your faith, the claim of God on your lives in holy baptism. Do you therefore intend to continue in this covenant that God made you with you in that holy baptism, to live amongst God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Jesus Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace on, in all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Amen. And so, people of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. And we ask God to help and guide us. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for it is through the water and the Holy Spirit that you gave to us new life and new birth. Cleanse us from sin, raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. 
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again for the many blessings of this day. We are so grateful for your love of us. We ask that you be with us, give to us your Holy Spirit. Give us your peace, give us your courage, give us your inspiration. Help us to better love. As we have not done always an effective job in this last year, for Lord, sometimes we fought about things that have nothing to do with the eternal significance of Jesus Christ. We fought about our politics and silly things that will not last. We should be sharing the love of Jesus Christ. And so I'm praying that you would help us Christians to get our priorities straight. Help us to be people of love and passion to care for the homeless, to feed the hungry, to visit the imprisoned, for this is the call of Jesus Christ upon our lives, to bless the weak, to give courage and strength to those in need. And so guide us, God, and to your goodness and to your grace to bring Jesus Christ to the hearts of those around us, that this world might be touched and transformed. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Lastly, God, we do lift up, again, the children that will be baptized today at this altar. Well, not this altar, our upstairs altar in the sanctuary. We pray your blessing to fall upon them. Be with their parents, that their parents might have the strength to teach them about Jesus. For we ask this all in your precious name. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go out with the tongue of Jesus Christ, uh, with a, the word of Jesus Christ in our tongues. Let us sing in a thousand tongues throughout the world about our love of God. <laughs>
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Blessed assurance. Jesus is my hand. Thank you.